Hey guys, in this video, let's go ahead and see if we can take something from ZBrush and bring it into Maya for some beautiful uh, renders using Arnold. So in ZBrush, we're not gonna do UVs. We're not going to change our topology. We're not going to set a, uh, create any textures. Uh, you know, in Substance Painter, we're just gonna take a ZBrush model with some poly paint and bring it into Maya for some beautiful cinematic renders. So this is a really great technique if you want to just focus on your sculpting and then add some beautiful shots to your portfolio and you don't really uh, have time nor do you want to set up all the extra uh, stuff in between. All right, so let's take a look and see how it works. All right, so let's uh, jump right into this. So for this example specifically, I would like to use just a model that already exists uh, in ZBrush. And you can find the same uh, model by going to Lightbox and go into Demo Projects. And let's get this uh, famous uh, guy right here. So I'm just gonna double click on him. If you use ZBrush for a while, I'm sure you've seen him many times. And he's going to be pretty much perfect for uh, this example. So here he is. This is what he looks like in ZBrush. And um, you can tell that all the poly paint is turned on, right? These brushes are turned on. So he doesn't have textures. He just has um, all, all these uh, colors that are just painted on. So let's, let's use him as our example. So how do we bring this beast into uh, Maya for some, uh, you know, for some fun uh, test uh, rendering, right? Well, to uh, do this, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to combine all these subtools into one. So I'm gonna go to Merge, and I'm gonna say Merge Visible. As soon as I press Merge Visible, you can see another subtool was created called Merged um, uh, Earthquake. That's his name, Earthquake. So I'm gonna click on him. And now you can see that the subtools went away and I just have one layer uh, and it's all merged, right? The other thing that I need to pay attention to is the fact that this guy is 3.5 uh, million points, right? Active points. Now I could go to geometry and I could dial down the subdivision, but I don't want to do that. I, I'm actually going to delete the lower uh, subdivision. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Decimation Master to bring this number down because uh, the last thing you want to do, obviously, is bring such a heavy model into uh, Maya, right? So Maya is not going to be happy about that. All right, so let's go to uh, Decimation Master and let's go ahead and click on this button called Pre-Process Current. And before uh, we press this, one thing that we do need to make sure is that we have use and keep polypaint on, right? So we want to maintain his tattoos and his colors uh, for the skin and the shirt, right? So I'm going to turn that on and I'm going to say pre-process current. All right, very well. So once that finished, the next thing you want to do is you want to decimate it based on a certain percentage. So currently by default, it's set to 20%. I'm going to dial this down even more. I'm going to say 10%. And I'm gonna say decimate current. And as I do this, I'm gonna watch this number here. So it's at currently at 3.1 million. As soon as I press decimate current, you can see that I just went from uh, 3.1 million to 315,000. Now that's a that's a big difference. But at the same time, you can't really see any difference in quality as far as the this uh, ZBrush sculpt goes, right? Uh, we can also turn on our um, polyframe and we can see how ZBrush decimated the model and what it looks like, right? So that is pretty much perfect for um, what I'm shooting for to do the, the uh, rendering. So the next thing is going to be exporting this out. So let's go ahead and export. I'm just going to put it in my uh, test folder and I don't want it to be OBJ. I need it to be FBX. So I'm going to switch this to FBX to preserve all that uh, poly paint, right? Vertex colors. And I'm going to say save. So make sure you set, set it to FBX and say save. All right, so let's take a look at some of these options that come up for our FBX export. So I do want to say visible because that doesn't really matter. Select or visible because I just have one uh, layer. And I do need to switch this to uh, this mode. And I want to also make sure that my 
uh, normals are set to 100%, and I'm just gonna say okay. All right, so then once it uh, finishes exporting, let's go ahead and jump into Maya. And obviously the next step is going to be importing the FBX. So I'm gonna do that, file, import. All right, so uh, he comes in a little bit small. I can always grab my scale tool and just make them a little bit larger. And this is what it looks like, right? So currently, uh, obviously you can't see the color information, right? The uh, very first step I wanna do is I wanna right click and let's go ahead and uh, go to uh, material attributes and take a look. By default, you can see that it uh, came into Maya uh, by assigning this foam material. So I don't want that. I would like to assign uh, Arnold material. So I'm gonna go to my favorites and click on AI, uh, AI standard surface, or I can say assign new material and then go to, uh, let me reset this, go to Arnold and just click on AI standard surface. So it's the same same, uh, same thing, right? So once we have the AI standard material, we can even name it if we want. We can call it AI earthquake, right? Uh, so that's step one. Step two is going to be, uh, let's go ahead and click out of this and then click on our mesh just one time and uh, by default in the attribute editor you can see under your uh, shape uh, tab right you can see that there are a few options uh, the one that we're looking for is under uh, arnold so go ahead and open that up and under export make sure that you have something uh, checked called export vertex colors so i'm going to go ahead and click on that and the only other thing you want to do is go to your mesh controls and under current color set just go ahead and select this and copy this color set uh, zero right so you're gonna need that so that's gonna be pretty much step two once you've done that the next step that we want to do is setting up some lights uh, because by default if i turn my lights on and this is set to uh, arnold right there's no lights in the scene so let's go ahead and do uh, arnold let's do lights Let's add a sky, sky dome light, and in the color, I can change. I can bring in an HDR uh, image, and you can download one uh, from the web. Just type in free HDRI or HDR, and just download a uh, environment map that you like. So I'm gonna select one for myself. I kind of like this one. I'm gonna say open. All right, very nice. The uh, next thing is let's go ahead and render this and see how it's looking. So I'm gonna go to uh, my render settings here and let's just switch this to something really small like a 1K square image. And if we wanted to, we could maybe pump this up a little bit for a better uh, quality. I'm gonna set it to four and uh, three. The other thing I could do is I can select my sky, uh, sky dome light and change my samples. Maybe I wanna do four and four, just so uh, the image comes out a little bit, uh, you know, not so noisy. Uh, the other thing that I need to do is I need to right click on my material attributes and under color, I'm gonna turn this all the way up. Uh, I need to set, I need to tell Maya that the color needs to be driven from the vertex color or the poly paint. So how do we do that? Well, what we need to do is we need to click on this little uh, box next to the color. So let's, let's click on that. And in here, let's go ahead and type in something AI user. And we wanna go to Arnold and let's uh, select something called AI user data color. So I'm gonna uh, select that. And obviously for the attribute, I'm going to do control V to bring in that uh, thing that we uh, copied before, which is color set zero, right? I'm gonna press enter. And now if we wanted to, we could do a quick uh, uh, test for our rendering. All right, so initially this is what our rendering looks like. You can see the poly paint is being brought in and it's great, but he's way too shiny. So how do we fix this? Let's go ahead and press play so we can uh, have this update in real time. The uh, other thing that I need to do is I'm gonna select on my sky dome and I'm gonna bring my camera uh, the slider down so I because I, I don't want to see the environment image as I'm testing this so that's uh, something I could do another thing I could do is let's go ahead and again right click go to material attributes and let's 
change our uh, roughness. Maybe we don't want them to be so uh, shiny, right? So that's really uh, nice. And uh, the other thing that I can do to make this better is we can actually change the uh, gamma of this image. Right now he seems a little uh, washed out. How can we uh, pump up the colors uh, of our character? So to do this, I'm gonna go to uh, Hypershade. And in Hypershade, what I wanna do is I wanna find the name of the material, which is in my case, it's gonna be AI uh, Earthquake. So I'm gonna select that, right? So let's go ahead and click on this button here called Add Selected Notes to Graph. And the other thing is, uh, in my case, I need to press on this button here to see the input connections, right? So now I have this input connection that is our AI user uh, data color, and that's uh, plugged in into the color, right? So what we need to do is let's add gamma correction right into here. So to do this, I'm gonna right click and go to create nodes and I'm just gonna type in the word gamma uh, and it's two M's and I'm gonna select gamma correct. So now I have uh, this little node here and what I'm gonna do next is let's go ahead and unplug it from uh, the color. So to do this, I can just press delete and I can wire this into the gamma and then the out value is gonna go into the color. So essentially, uh, nothing has happened yet, but now what we could do is we can select our gamma correct and we can change these values. So watch these this uh, render. You can see that the character is currently kind of uh, washed out, but let's go ahead and adjust this. So I'm gonna say 0 0.5 and let's do point, uh, 0.5 here and we'll do another one here, press enter. And voila, then you can see that the uh, color using the gamma correction is much closer to what it was in uh, ZBrush. So at this point, you can do uh, lots of cool stuff. You can add more lights. You can do, let's add a fun rim light. I'm gonna go to Arnold, lights. Let's do add another area light. Maybe grab our scale tool. Make the, the uh, our rim light a little larger. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna position it on the back of the character. And of course I need to make sure that it's uh, facing the character. So I'm gonna rotate my light uh, something like this. Maybe move it a little bit to the side. At this point, it's just a matter of uh, preference, right? So now let's go ahead and turn this light on. So while it's selected, I can go to my attribute editor and I can pump this up. So uh, let's dramatically increase the intensity. So I'm gonna go something like uh, 900,000. That should do it. I'm gonna press enter. And you can see how right away it's adding, uh, let me zoom in a little closer. You can see that there's a rim light coming uh, off the character, which is really cool. I can of course change the rotation. I can uh, even add more exposure if I want it to be even more dramatic. I can also add a color temperature and I can make it, you know, warm. Maybe he's, you know, enjoying sunset somewhere or maybe it's kind of cool. So I'm gonna go with the, uh, let's go with the cool uh, option. All right, another thing I could do is, of course, I can also increase the samples. Uh, let's go ahead and pump this up to four so we have uh, a nice rendering, and there you go. So that's how easy uh, it is to pretty much uh, create epic uh, cinematic renders uh, from ZBrush to Maya with characters just simply holding that vertex color or the poly paint um, without any uh, UVs or uh, textures. All right, so I hope you find this uh, helpful and uh, have fun adding uh, amazing images to your uh, portfolio. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next video.